We're going to Tulsa. Should be fun. Welcome back, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. And today we embark on another adventure, but this one is a little bit different. It's not a stig shift. It's more of a stig adventure. If you guys watched the last video, I mentioned that my schedule lately has been a little bit sporadic. It's because I am part of AMC, Aerospace Maintenance Competition, or a participant, I should say. In order to participate within this competition, we need some training. So me and my team had to fly out to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Don't worry, I'll make a full video after the competition ends, which is April 7th to the 12th, and I'll tell you guys all about the adventure. But for now, me and my team have to fly out to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to the biggest MRO facility in the world. This is where we will train. Now, unfortunately, I cannot show you the training, but what I can show you is a brief tour of the facilities that I visited, as well as a nice tour of a space and air museum in Tulsa. So stick around if you're into that. It should be fun. And don't worry, the stick shifts are not over. Once I'm back on my regular schedule, which will be this week, I'll get you guys more stick shift content and more fun stuff to learn. Until then, let's enjoy the MRO and the museum. Come on, let's go. The flight from LAX to Tulsa was lovely. We took a ERJ-175 and luckily it was a direct flight. I personally have never worked on this aircraft, but it's a lovely aircraft to fly on, very comfortable. After a beautiful landing, you can actually see the MRO right across. It's a massive facility. Another very interesting fact about this airport, which is in Tulsa International, is that it houses the Tinker Air Force Base. It is the largest Department of Defense air depot. You'll see some fun F-16s. Well, we're here at Tulsa, the training facility, but taking a little break. Not often you get to see a 777 landing gear strut, or the whole landing gear, on its side. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Look at that. Massive. Components that you're seeing here are staged up to go into heavy overhaul. This comes off of a 777-200 the main landing gear strut, as well as the truck assembly with all the axles. As you can see, the center axle has been removed right here. They are preparing all these components for overhaul and refurbishment. The facility has the capability to refurbish or renew any component. Believe it or not, they even have CNC machines that can pretty much build a whole landing gear strut from scratch. Also took the opportunity to stroll through a gutted 737-800 right here. As you can see, all the passenger service units those things that house your oxygen generator, you know, the masks that drop down right there. That's the cylinder that actually creates a chemical reaction. When you pull down on your mask, it will fire a pin. The chemical reaction will start and you will have breathable oxygen. Usually lasts right around uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Just enough time to get down to proper altitude. But the cool part is the gutted airplane. you will never see an airplane like this ever in your life because... This is what it looks like in a heavy overhaul facility. The airplanes will get gutted completely and put back together. This is obviously after all inspections and repairs. Here's another cool look, what it looks like underneath the ray dome of a 737. What you're looking at there is the weather radar, which is in the center, the localizer, and the light slope. Here's another quick look at it right here. The bottom portion that looks like a towel rack, that's your localizer. The center one is the weather antenna. As you can see, it, it can articulate left to right, up and down. And the little tab up top, that is the glide slope antenna. Always fun to see what's underneath the ray dome, or under the hood, I should say. As promised, you get to see some F-16s. Forgive the shaky camera, I was doing a very bad job, but here, enjoy this. Fun to watch these birds doing their maneuvers, practice runs. Forgive all the rubble, they were renewing all the concrete right there in front of the hangar. For having the biggest airline in the world, you need to have a massive facility, and this is it. The carrier has invested over $550 million to this base maintenance facility. At the moment, the facility is housing over 5,000 employees. 
and it's growing day by day. Those engines that you see lined up right there are ready for overhaul or completed overhaul. That's why I say aviation is booming and we need more mechanics, proficient mechanics. Within the facility itself, you will find specific shops that will break down certain components, refurbish them, and get them back into airworthy condition. And we are talking about minute parts, everything from engines to seats, you name it, they do it. This is what you would call a well-oiled machine. Everything is perfectly organized, everything is done by the numbers, and aircraft get back into service. This, what you're looking at, is an engine shop. They will pull these engines apart piece by piece, refurbish everything that needs to be refurbished, remanufacture everything that needs to be remanufactured, and put it back into service. Now check this out, look at this, sectioned out engines. Now I'm a line maintenance technician and I have worked hangar before, but not at this capacity. This is where true maintenance gets done. I salute and have big respect to my brothers and sisters out there in the maintenance world within these MROs that are putting their hard work, dedication and effort into making all this work. Without them, there is no me. There's so much in the background within aviation that's absolutely incredible. It's even hard to capture it on film like this, let alone talk about it. You know, being around these facilities, it, it just makes me incredibly proud of what I do because I know the dedication, the hard work that it takes to perform these duties. I've said this before and I'll say it again, you have to love what you do and the people in these kind of facilities love what they do. They are proud of what they do because they know what kind of product they're putting out. Even though they're never seen, they know and understand the scope of the situation and the safety values of the airline industries. There's people out there that put their heart and soul and dedication into this industry and they want to see it succeed. Forgive me for sounding like a cliche, but I am one of those people. I want to see it succeed. I stepped into another bay and I took a look at this 777-300, which was getting a repair for its wing spar. Not only that, I actually got to crawl inside of the center fuel tank of the 777-300. I've never been in this one. Don't worry, it's all vented out. All safety precautions are taken but it's absolutely incredible how big and massive the center fuel tank it is on a 777. Well, we're all done with training, but come over here, check out a museum. Tulsa Air and Space Museum. Let's have some fun. All right, enough of the MRO, time for the museum. You see my team right there walking up ahead of me, but uh, they have a MD-80 up on stilts right here, which we'll see a little later on which is absolutely amazing. Your boy Stig, yours truly, did get to work on this aircraft and it was a fun aircraft. Don't get me wrong, I do love that aircraft, but to ask any aircraft technician, it is a bit of a pain. One of these days I'll make a video of my career and where I've gone through and what I've done, working on MD-80s, working on L-1011s, working on 727s, 747s, and a whole bunch of other airplanes that I used to play with. But yeah, it was all fun. I learned a lot, but don't worry. <laughs> We're not going to get into that for now. We'll play with that one later on. But let's go back to what I was talking about. The museum. Inside the museum. The museum is not that big, but it's actually very beautiful and well set up. Unfortunately, they're very low funded. So if you do get a chance to come out to Tulsa, I highly encourage for you to come over here and visit. Help it out, you know, come over. It's not a big admission price. I think it was like $11 for an adult. Yeah, definitely highly encourage you to come out here and just to look at the beautiful aircraft that they have. They're very well preserved, very well established. You know, it's a fun time with a friend, family, whatever. That, you know, if you're into aviation, you would enjoy it. These are beautiful. The reason why I enjoy museums, especially aviation museums, because you get to see the progression of technology. It's like looking into the past and slowly creeping your way up into the future. Look at that, that is a biplane. And look what is flying around nowadays. Heck, look at the model right next to it. It's 747. 
for me, it gives me a point of appreciation where how much we have grown as a society, as a technological society, first of all, and as just human beings uh, in the advancement that we make. Oh, this one was very cool. Uh, this is a R2800 Pratt & Whitney, and it was a cutout, but it was actually a functioning model. I'll turn it on here in a second. You guys can actually see all the articulation of the pistons, the all the gearbox, everything. It's very well done. As I walk through the rest of the museum, a lot more reciprocating engines and going through the history of the propulsion portion of aviation. One of the iconic things is the WASP engine, the R1340. Don't mind me, I'm a little child when it comes down to these kind of museums. I have to touch everything. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Don't worry, I wouldn't touch anything to damage anything, but I just want to touch it because I want to feel it. It makes me feel like I'm a part of it. I know that sounds weird, but just being able to touch such components, it, it makes me, it ties me into the history of it, I, I guess. I don't know. It, I, make it make sense. I can't make it make sense, but that's the way my brain works. And forgive me for not going into technical mumbo jumbo on this one because I just want you to appreciate what you're looking at. I'm sure you guys can look all this up on your own. This is very easy to find. Uh, I don't wanna boggle up the video with a bunch of just technical jargon and reading off Wikipedia because that's exactly what I would be doing. I just want you to enjoy it and see what I see through my eyes. Don't you dare judge me. The display was open. I could sit down. It was allowed. I'm going to sit down here and pretend like I'm Maverick. Too close for missiles. Switching to guns.
You know, I find it quite interesting. I step out of modern aircraft such as a Boeing or an Airbus and I step into a classic Douglas DC-3 and I'm seeing the same things. The same switches, the same components. Yeah, obviously things are more analog. You got the steam gauges, but the switches designating certain components and the layouts, it's still the same thing. And I find that very fascinating. Look at that, even the light switches, all there. That's, that's phenomenal. One of the most beautiful pieces within the museum is a F-14 Tomcat. This aircraft is massive. I'm sure at this point everybody has seen Top Gun or Maverick. This airplane is iconic, but it's much bigger than I anticipated. Ejecto seat. <laughs> so that's where, where Maverick will sit. And Goose. If anyone here that is watching that has been a maintainer on the F-14 or a pilot, please feel free to share your experiences. I would love to hear your stories. Once again, I'm not very educated on these type of aircraft. All I can do is admire them and just read whatever is online. So please, if you do have fascinating stories, share it here. I'd love to hear it. Share it with the community. I'm sure they would love to hear it. I mean, it's, it's a piece of history. I love the fact that they have the aircraft configured in the swept wing configuration. It's beautiful. Beautiful F-14 Tomcat.
they had another beautiful mock-up over here of a flight deck of a t-37 right here which is awesome you get to go in and sit down right there But here we are to the main event, the MD-80 Tour. Let's go outside, let's check it out. They also had another pretty cool thing right next to the MD-80. You'll see it, it's a helicopter. This is gonna give me an opportunity to talk about the paint of the aircraft. Somebody asked in the comments, how come airlines don't just leave the bare metal as you see right here? Obviously, it's very beautiful to have the chrome exposed, right? But it becomes a problem. There's two factors to this. Number one, Yes, it does look beautiful, but now you're exposing the elements to the bare metal of the aircraft, which means the aircraft metal or the fuselage is more susceptible to corrosion. Even though there are anti-corrosive properties that are coated onto the bare metal, it's still susceptible to corrosion. Number two, the amount of manpower that it takes to keep that aircraft that pristine, which means polishing the aircraft nonstop, making sure that high gloss finish is always there or the high uh, shine is there is not cost effective it's more cost effective to have the aircraft primed or primered and painted to a certain livery the aircraft will last a lot longer even though all of us do enjoy that beautiful high chrome finish it's just not viable it's not sustainable i think there's only one aircraft that's left within our fleet i think it's a uh, 737 which still has that chrome finish and trust me, it does take a lot of effort to keep that high chrome shine on there. But anyway, I digress. Let's go back to the MD-80. She's actually a pretty good looking bird. Uh, they actually got it maintained pretty well. Most of the things are covered up obviously because of wildlife. And a quick look at the iconic JT-8D. This thing is beautiful. This is the same engine you saw at the MRO facility where they had a functioning model. Well, I could say a rotating model, but it was the actual engine. But this is what it looks like in the combustion section and various components of the compressor. You'll see it right here in a second. Let's go take a step inside of the aircraft and take a look at what is going on in there. <laughs> As I was walking up, I noticed, look at that, there's still speed tape on the wing. That's hilarious. But to be honest with you, it's actually still well-preserved aircraft. I'm glad they still have this here. Everything has been pretty much covered up, but if you look into the aft of the aircraft, there should not be that, you know, living room door there. There's actually a hatch back there that leads to air stairs that could drop down. I think you saw it earlier on when I was walking towards the empennage of the aircraft. The aircraft was donated to the museum, not only to commemorate the history of the aircraft, but also to honor the people that were part of the project of this MD-80. For the majority of it, everything is pretty much intact. Obviously, besides the aft cabin and the overhead bins are completely gone, but you can still see the beautiful seat configuration. The aircraft itself is actually very comfortable. I've flown it many times, but only if you were sitting in the forward portions of it. If you were uh, the unlucky non-rev that was sitting in the aft portion near the engines, yeah, that was a <laughs> loud day, lack of a better word. A quick look into the galley right here. We can see the classic coffee makers right there, which is quite interesting. I changed a lot of them, that's fun. But overall, a galley is a galley. They all look the same to me, and here it is the creme de la creme, the flight deck itself. This brings back a lot of memories for me because I have worked this aircraft for many years. 
Man, oh man, it's uh, it was an interesting bird to work on. This is what you call a mechanics airplane. This airplane doesn't talk to you. It's not an Airbus, it's not a modern day Boeing. This airplane, you have to feel it. You have to know it. You have to understand it. You have to take the time. Take a look at the tiller. That's what spins the nose wheels. It actually does look like a steering wheel from a car. As I've said before, a lot of the stuff mimics the modern day age aircraft. Everything is labeled. It's pretty much self-explanatory at this point. Now here's an interesting thing in regards to the MD-80. It did not start out as an MD-80. The aircraft began its life as a DC-9. DC-9 is the birth of this fuselage and the architecture of this aircraft. It slowly evolved out of the DC-9, going into the MD-80, and then the Super-80, and then finally it evolved into the Boeing 717 when the company was bought out. The fascinating part about this, if you can take a look at this airplane, you can almost compare it to the 737 in the modern day and age of the evolution of it. You can look at the classic or the Jurassic, the 737-200s, and how it has evolved into the max to nowadays. This was that aircraft back then, where it evolved into the 717. The final aircraft that was on display outside was this beautiful Huey, which was sitting right next to the MD-80. So it might as well end it with this iconic piece of machinery right here. A big salute to all my Vietnam veterans out there because I'm sure you've seen a lot of these. This thing was a workhorse for the army. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of this facility and the MRO as well. It was a great time and it was great training experience for me as well. But now it's time to go home, time to get back to work. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the little side quest adventure here. More to come, a lot more stick shifts and a lot more adventures. I appreciate every single one of you and I hope you have a beautiful day. I'll see you guys later. Take care.